Hey, what's up, Alex here. This is the first video that I'm planning to do to showcase some of the projects that I've implemented. I'm planning to do this in a very unscripted manner. Uh, I'm just going to shoot this with my DJI Osmo Pocket with minimum edits. The family is planning to move in in the next couple of days. So I'm just going to just quickly run through with you the entire setup. Okay, this is a three bedroom condo somewhere in the southeast part of Singapore. Okay, I'm just going to start with the entrance first, show you the video doorbell that I went with. So this is the rolling battery doorbell. I did a video of this, so right now I think this is the best budget video doorbell uh, right now. Okay, at the main door area, as usual, I like to put a contact sensor over here. So once you open the door, then it will switch on the entrance light over here. So the only thing is you need to kind of separate the entrance light with the rest of the lights in the living room. So make sure this is isolated. So this light is physically wired to the switch over here. So over here at the entrance, I always like to do a switches with more gangs because you can always use the rest of the buttons to control other stuff. So for example, you can have one button to control everything off or maybe one button to control just the lights without the AC, without the fan. So it's really up to you how you want to configure this. So for me, if I'm doing this, I will actually not do a switch over here. Instead, over here, I will maybe put a display panel Okay, right beside this condo in the com and to have the display panel to control everything in the house. So all the down lights that you see inside the living room over here, uh, including the dining pendant light here, are all from Saw Luminaire. So the thing with Saw Luminaire is they don't do smart lights. So in order to make them smart and able to control the brightness, I put a jelly relay inside, hidden inside the tall ceiling for the lights. Okay, then stepping over here, is like a pantry area. So for the all the LED cove light LED strips, I went with the Akara dimmer, Akara strips to control the lighting. On top of the water dispenser, we put a rolling uh, wired camera over here to oversee the entire living room area. So the owner didn't really want to have uh, fixed cameras. So that's why we didn't intend, we didn't want to mount them into any of the carpentry works. So just leave it lying over here. So in the future, if they want to remove it, they can remove it anytime. And this section is like a bar area. So once open, then inside the LED strip will automatically on. So there are a contact sensor over here. So to make this automation happen. So outside, these are the balcony lights. There's a wall light, there's a down lights. Uh, these are not smart lights, so just connected to a smart switch. Okay, uh, pretty nice view outside. So it's like a pool view for them. Then on top is a LED strip, okay, cove lighting. This is again the Akara Dima light strip. So I think a lot of houses like to do the cove lighting shining at the curtain nowadays, very common. And you can see the curtain track itself. This is not a smart curtain track because this is pretty long. <laughs> Okay, and to do a smart curtain track is going to be quite expensive. So that's why uh, we decided to just go with the switchboard curtain, okay, to just uh, control the curtains. Uh, once the curtain fabric is up, then we can do the calibration for the switchboard curtain board. Okay, for fans, this is the Haiku fan. I think it's the same one as what I showcased in my smart fan video. So this supports matter, integrates very well with Home Assistant. Okay, just a little bit costly. As for the AC, these are the Daikin Smart AC. So Smart AC means that I can tie this to a smart switch with two uh, status control on and off. This means that even when someone is going to use a remote control to switch off the AC, the light switches smart switch will be able to sync to the correct state and reflect uh, accordingly. So that is the beauty of having a smart AC. Then for the switches, I didn't mention these are the same as what I have set up for my own house. These are the Akara Z1 Pro switches. You have a slider control, three relay controls, and the last button you can use it for three gestures, controls, a wireless button technically. So basically I can use the slider to control the brightness of the saw luminaire lights okay, via Shelly. Okay, so the six 
uh, down lights over here, I'm just going to reduce the brightness. Okay, you can see it's reduced. Then I slide up. Okay, it's going to increase the brightness. All right, then stepping into the kitchen. Okay, lights will automatically be on. The down lights uh, controlled by the motion sensor over here. This is a smart things motion sensor. In my opinion, uh, it's the best, most reliable and crazy battery life for the motion sensor. So that's why I like to always use the smart things motion sensor for home assistant setup. Okay, for the kitchen, the owner didn't want to spend much uh, for in terms of smart home devices. So it's just this smart LED light strip over here, which is the Akara one. And the switches is hidden over here. So like I, what I always mention to all my clients itself, if it is a light that you weren't intentionally to go and switch them on and off, it's best to hide the switches somewhere. And hiding the switches means that you don't need to install a smart switch. So you can see this is a very normal Schneider electric smart switch, uh, switches, non-smart. Okay, you can always hide them. And in this case, because it's the Akara dimmer, so it's already smart. So uh, you can just tie this to a normal switch. If it's not a smart strip, you can always put a relay inside to make the light strip smart. Okay, so in this way, you can save costs, don't need to every switches, buy and use a smart switch. Okay. So this is the kitchen area, then this is the laundry area, there's no smart devices here. Okay, there's another toilet here, then this is the laundry area. Then this is the Stegen drying rack, okay, bomb shelter over here. Okay, let's come out of the kitchen and let's talk about the network. So in terms of the network setup, okay, I went with the Unify setup. This is the Unify Express 7. This comes with Wi-Fi, 10G WAN. So since this does Wi-Fi, so it's best to put it somewhere at the open area to maximize the Wi-Fi coverage. Okay, connecting down. Okay, this is like their DB area. It's all hidden inside this TV console area. So first is the Huawei ONT. The ISP is from ViewQuest. So of course the Unify Express 7 will connect to the ONT. Then the Unify Express 7 also will connect to a switch over here. This is just a normal 5 port switch uh, from Unify as well. Then here is my home assistant green with the Sono Zigbee stick. So at the TV console area, they are also planning to buy a Sonos Ultra soundbar. Okay, this Sonos beam will go into one of the bedrooms. So they are waiting for 1111 to buy a Sonos Art Ultra. Hopefully they will get a white color one so that to blend match the color of the Unify Express. And hopefully, because the Sonos Art Ultra is going to be much longer, so potentially it's able to hide the cables as well. Okay. So below the TV console, there is also an LED light strip. Okay, there is another switch over here to control the corridor lights. So the first, this is the corridor lights. Okay, then there is there are also some nice wall lights over here. You can see, let me switch off and on. You can see the nice wall lights. All right, so the next AP is right over here. This is the U7 Pro Max. So there are only two AP points. So besides the Unify Express, then this is the other one. The rooms doesn't have any more AP. This U7 Pro Max will be providing Wi-Fi access for this entire area, which consists of the common toilet, uh, the bedrooms itself. All right, now let's talk about the master bedroom next. For each of the room, I always went with one Z1 Pro switch and paired together with a Hue dimmer switch. Okay, the reason is because uh, the lights over here are also from Saw Luminaire, but they doesn't have any false ceiling. So which means I need I won't be able to hide the relays over here. So instead the relays will be hidden behind the Hue dimmer switch. Okay, for the Hue dimmer switch, I like this device a lot. I think it pairs very nicely with uh, relays like the Shelly ones. Okay, one button will control okay, two of the lights over here then another button will control the three lights near the wall drop area. So I have configured such a way that the dimming controls will happen for those lights that are being switched on. Okay, 
So if they are switched on, once I press the dimming controls, okay, it will all control them together. However, if the lights are being off, okay, let's say this is off. Okay, then once I when I control the dimming, it will only happen for the lights behind. Okay, the good thing about the hue dimmer switch is you can always stick this anywhere. Okay, something that I really like to use. Okay, then this is the dresser area. There's also an LED strip over here, a switch here to control the on and off, as well as the brightness control from the slider. Okay, for the wardrobe, they are all installed with contact sensor, meaning when I open the wardrobe, the lights, LED lights inside will light up. I also configured in such a way that only the last set of wardrobe that are being closed will turn off the LED strip. Okay, uh, again, not very nice pool view over here. You have the, for the rooms, it's all the Akara curtain track moto. Okay, these are not very long, I think between two to three meters. So quite affordable to put a smart curtain track. Okay, as for the lights, there are bay window lights over here. Okay, the bay window lights, these are not uh, paired together with any of the Shelly relays, so won't be able to control the brightness. Okay, this is mainly because the owner didn't feel that they are going to use the bay window lights that often. So to save costs, we didn't place any of the relays for the bay windows. Okay, then there are also LED strip. So this is like a display area for the master bedroom. Okay, for the bed side, okay, I always like to propose these smart things buttons. I think these are very nice and handy. So you can always control anything that you want. Press once will open the Cove LED that you see behind, okay, then maybe double press will off all the lights, okay, off all the lights and press and hold for another control. Alright, let's check out the master bathroom next. There is a two gang switch over here to control two groups of lights, okay, there are the down lights which is not paired with any Shelly relay. So you won't be able to control the dimming for over here. But seldom people control the lights, the down lights inside the bathroom. Okay, mainly will be the LED lights that is over at the mirror area. So the good thing about having smart lights for the LED lights over here is that during midnight, you can have the motion sensor to trigger and switch on the lights at maybe 20% brightness so that uh, you will not be glaring for the eyes. Okay, then this is the shower area with the motion sensor at the corner. Okay, then let's check out the other rooms next. Okay, so this room is the guest room. Okay, similar concept. You have the four down lights, solar lights over here. Then you have a fan. Uh, then you have the curtain controller. Okay, and bay windows lights okay for here the bedside there is another switch so the switch you can always configure one button to turn off all the lights very convenient when you want to go to bed okay so similar concept for the switches i always like to have one four gang okay you can always control any other things okay over here is the entrance to the common bathroom and you have a heater switch over here so for the common bathroom there is a like a two-way wire switch configured so the wires are physically attached to this switch okay but over here there is another switch so the thing about smart switches is you don't need to physically do a two-way wiring so this can be just wired with a live to power on the switch that's all then you use software to configure this to switch on that switch okay again motion sensor enabled okay but it's not at the time of the day so i need to manually turn this on and off okay so there's led strip okay and there are down lights okay then the motion sensor is right at the corner all right now for the last room okay the last room they use this 
like a study come baby room. Okay, again, similar concept. Okay, one for gang and one dimmer switch. Okay, one button to control the curtain LED. Okay, then another button to control the fan. Then this is AC, then a button for everything off. Okay, dimmer switch to on the two sets of down lights over here. Okay, so some of the stuff are already moved here. Similarly, you have one curtain controller over here, then the bay window lights, the LED strip at the curtain area. Okay, then the next um, cameras will be placed here. So this has the flexible mount because they are planning to place it uh, at the baby cot area. So having this flexible mount will be very nice. All right, I'm sure many of you will be asking or interested to know how much is the entire cost of this setup. So uh, the price of the networking equipment and the smart home devices, products and services add up or in is within 10K. So let's say if you are interested to do something similar, within 10K is achievable. Okay, so this is one of the many videos that I plan to do to showcase all the smart home setup. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of such content. I have linked all the products that I mentioned in the video description and also tagged to the video itself. Alright, hope you like this video. See you in the next one. Bye.